Materials engineer and number one community voted bromance of the show, Dare Bauer, joined us for a lengthy discussion on new products, thermal engineering, thermal paste misconceptions, industry-wide misleading marketing, and thermal conductivity. We originally wanted to shoot a 15-minute video, but then we kept talking a lot, and the end of the shoot looked like this. How, how long was that? That's pretty good. Um, 50 minutes. 50? Five zero, yeah. Yeah. Holy oh, shit. I said I was gonna cut it. I didn't expect it. In this video, Der Bauer, spelled mit Oct, joins us specifically to cover misleading marketing of thermal conductivity values and thermal pastes and interfaces. It's a subject that Roman openly admits he's participated in with his thermal grizzly involvement, but it's something that he's decided to get away from, and he'd like to see the rest of the industry do the same. That starts with education, and that's what he's here to provide. This is one of two videos, because we talked a lot enough to need to split them, that we'll be uploading with Der Bauer. Before that, this video is brought to you by Deepcool and the new Zero Dark series of AK620 and AK400 CPU coolers. We previously reviewed the AK620 and AK400 and found them to be among a new crop of extremely competitive coolers for the price. The new Zero Dark and Zero Dark Plus variations move out to a blackout color design with blackout FDB fans. The heatsinks otherwise have the same characteristics as those that we tested previously and found to be well performing, just with a fresh new look. Learn more at the link in the description below. Do we start the rant now? Have we, we can, been to the can, products? We can rant if okay. you want to. Yeah. Thermal conductivity. Uh, what is it and why is it a fake thing that's not real? I mean... That's what you were saying to me earlier. <laughs> it's, it's not like thermal conductivity is not real, but there... No, are no, no, that's what you said. <laughs> you said something about like thermal conductivity is flat. I don't know. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> so the thing with uh, thermal conductivity is that you can make it whatever way, you want. You can make it the way that it suits you. Uh -huh. uh, let's say easy easy example is liquid metal. Yeah. Um, the thermal conductivity is dependent on temperature, and there is no real standard for it. Um, a lot of the like standard testing machines are, are testing at 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Then you can argue that's too far away from application. So I test at 100 degrees Celsius, and. Um, yeah. Which so we talk about this. Yes. At LTX like five or six years ago, I remember asking the same question. <laughs> uh, which one produces the better number? If you the, test the higher temperature. Okay, that's what I thought. But the higher yeah. temperature is more realistic. Yeah. So not only is it more realistic, but it produces a more advantageous marketing number. Yeah, but I can also test at 500 degrees Celsius. <laughs> okay. Well, why don't you do that? Yeah. I mean, uh, to be fully honest, we did that. Okay, yeah. And then not, not, at 500, not at 500, but at yeah. a higher temperature. Yeah. And um, because there is no standard, yeah. you can, I mean, it's, it's a curve. And you don't define at what point it's actually tested. Because we're also giving a temperature range. I'm not sure what it is for liquid metal, but it might be like up to 350 degrees uh -huh. Celsius, something like that. So I, ca I, can test at ma I can test at minus 10. I can yeah. test at plus 350. Right. And then I can make, make it look the way I want. And um, so, and here's the thing too, is like, We've pointed this out. Uh, I think I think at GN we started pointing it out more after I talked to you the first time, but uh, hopefully most of the time comparing thermal conductivity numbers within a manufacturer should be comparable. Uh, but I guess it depends on if they change how they modify that curve per product. And even then, I guess yeah, I question maybe the value of that number. It, it, yeah, so it's just walk it back really quick, but. We're talking about the watts per meter Kelvin number. Yes. Just for anyone who's confused. Yes. So, so. so let's say you have a thermal paste that's showing eight watt per meter Kelvin, or you have this um, that in theory can show you like I don't know, like one thousand. We obviously don't list it on there. Uh, <laughs> that's a really big because number. Because we because like um, there's also because people keep asking me this a lot. Like, why is it not on the package? Uh -huh. Like three or four years ago, we decided that it's. Not a good way to advertise a product. Sure. Um, I think it takes focus away from what it's actually trying to do. Right. Yeah, like, and um, it's it, the same for the pace. It's, it's kind of misleading um, because I think the the best way to do it is that we send it to reviewers, and the reviewer is just comparing paste A versus paste mm. B or this product, and then show what the real difference is. Well, even that um, is difficult because we've done some limited uh, thermal interface testing, but it was mostly like the, the sheets, like the IC diamond stuff. Uh, but the, one of the challenges with 
thermal interfaces, as uh, obviously you know, but for the audience, is not only what's the performance in terms of the temperature difference in the product you're testing, but also you have to consider things like longevity and aging, uh, dry out. Um, if it's in an extreme application, how well does it withstand liquid nitrogen? Stuff like that, and and so even reviews are very difficult to properly do. I yeah, think. and if you let's say you talk about icy diamond, I'm not sure what it is, but if you look at those uh, graphic graphic sheets, yeah, they often list like 600 watt per meter Kelvin, and right. then they perform the same as a the thermal paste that that's listed with eight, and then you should start thinking that it's it's not a good metric. Doesn't mean anything. Um, a very good example I usually uh, have is if you look at a solid piece of copper and it has like. 390 watt per meter Kelvin thermal conductivity. Right. If I put at 25 degrees Celsius. Yeah, and yeah. if I if I turn this into dust and add a little bit of silicon oil, it ends up at like I don't know like yeah. five. five An alchemist or what? <laughs> turn it into gold. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could. <laughs> no, but if if you add a little bit of silicon oil, so basically ah. it's a paste. Um, then it turns into like an overall thermal conductivity of five to ten. Okay. So it's a lot worse, even though the base right. material is still the same. So does it work the inverse way? Yeah. So okay. thinking about that, if you increase the particle size, then you will also increase thermal conductivity. Mm. As stupid as this might sound, but that's the way it is. But you increase particle but size. But as you increase particle size, you introduce problems, I would assume, with mounting an application. Yeah. Where, depending on how extreme you go with the particle size, it seems like those would start causing contact problems. Yeah, you, you increase the, the layer, mm -hmm. and that's why the, the, the thermal conductivity will be higher, but your like delta between, the let's say, the CPU and the cooler will be higher. Right. So your pe temperature will be worse, even though your thermal conductivity will be higher. Right. And so this way you can, if you want to, you can tune a paste in a way that it looks nice on a bench, mm. but it will perform bad. Yeah. And that's why um, I just wanted to highlight that, like, like, don't go after those conductivity values. So just trust reviewers. And um, well, let me ask you this: so, we we haven't bought one of these yet. Uh, I was thinking about it though. So, there's two types of like thermal paste testing machines. One of them is much more advanced. Um, I don't know. If, do you know Lanwen, the company? No. Okay. So they're a local local Taiwan manufacturer, and. Uh, they have these large thermal interface testing devices. Mm -hmm. They're automated. They can do all kinds of stuff. But uh, there's dummy heaters. They apply a known amount of force. They can do aging testing by running it through multiple cycles. It's very advanced. I think methodologically, I, I would trust the machine methodologically. What I don't know if I can trust, and the reason I haven't bought one, is how much does that matter? How much does that reflect real world use? Or you know, at what point? Because if you try to test with real components, you're not going to see any difference a lot of the time. That's 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 the the thing I wanted or the thing I meant. Because you get values from that. Yeah. You can get conductivity values, but they don't reflect the actual performance we want to see on the CPU. Right. So that's again the thing. You can. If you just do this kind of testing, you can tune your paste or liquid metal or whatever mm. that it will show higher numbers. Right. But practically, it can still be worse. And they can yeah. they produce a temperature number as well. But unless and I we could have them do this, but unless you change the dummy heater to have say specific MOSFET locations for like I/O, CCD, whatever, and also have an actual transplanted IHS onto it. Yeah. It just seems like it's. It seems like you might as well do some kind of re modified real-world testing. Yeah, that's what we recommend. I mean, in yeah. the end... That would save me about $70,000, so I yes. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I mean, I would love that you hunt down the, the rabbit hole of yeah. uh, showing that all the conductivity numbers don't make sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's probably... I, I'd be willing to spend that that's money to do pro that. probably a nice video. I'm not sure if it's yeah. worth uh, spending 70K, 70K on it. Um, but worth it? Yeah. No. <laughs> Fun, probably yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like these type of videos. Yeah, me too. You, you would like to see it as well, I yeah. think. But uh, it's maybe a bit over the top. But yeah. in the end, I mean, in the in the end, the user will only care is my CPU colder or not. Right. And that's also a thing. Um, we can argue about that maybe the test methodology on uh, like a CPU is mm. not accurate enough, so it's like introducing too many problems like mounting pressure and the temperature sensor right. in the CPU. But I mean, if your if your <laughs> if your result is so like close to each other, 
That is kind of a result too, I uh, guess. Yeah, it's a result. Yeah. How does it matter? Right. Like, uh, if you're the user out there and you want to figure out if this paste is 0 0.02 degree right. uh, better than the other one. And that's why it seems, yeah. it seems like, uh, from a manufacturer's perspective, like Thermal Grizzly, the argument to make would not necessarily, liquid metal is a little different, yeah. but for paste would not necessarily be performance purely it would also be longevity and yeah. ease of application yeah. we are, stuff like that. yeah that's why we are working on a new pace right now um, probably still one year ahead okay. maybe more um, that's trying to be as good as cryonaut but mm. just a lot better in the longevity sure. and uh, still being able to apply it because like over the years I just came from an enthusiast perspective just doing Allen 2 all day long mm. so I had a completely different mindset. And I didn't really care what other people were saying. Right. But now that's, um, I mean, I obviously care a lot about if the normal user can apply it or not. Yeah. So we are trying to adapt to that. And I think also for you, I think the longevity and like the application is much more important mm -hmm. than if it's one or two degrees Celsius better. Yeah. Like being, being fully honest, even though obviously I would love that people buy Cryonaut Extreme, but being honest, it doesn't make sense. And like, it, yeah, it, yeah, you, and some of that stuff too. Like, it's okay to leave the flagship Halo for the flagship Halo user, like someone on stage downstairs doing Alan too, yeah. and not necessarily sell it to everyone. So, yeah, yeah, no, that that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean to close this uh, conductivity topic, um, if you're out there, just don't go by those numbers and just check reviews. And if the result is so close to each other, then just check what other like properties the paste has. No matter which which uh, manufacturer it is, just check if it's maybe if it's cheaper, maybe um, if it's easier to apply, maybe if the comments say hey, it lasts longer or whatever. Right. I was yeah. gonna say even if it's not validated by someone. So I know there's like a, a dearth of uh, reviews on paste in general, but even if it's not validated. You can still tell a lot, at least from the marketing language, where if there's some base trust in the company, uh, like say, like Thermal Grizzly, Noctua, any company that has kind of earned like a base level yeah. of confidence, yeah. you know, yeah. um, you can look at the marketing language and at least figure out who are they trying to sell it to. So they list longevity versus they don't list longevity. That does tell you something useful if no reviews exist for it. So, yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, temperatures fake. And uh, <laughs> energy doesn't exist. Earth is flat. Oh, no. <laughs> Demonetized. Maybe, maybe just beat that out. <laughs> yeah, we'll bleep that one. I, I bleeped uh, almost your entire segment from oh. earlier. The V5. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> it's just you say, yeah, uh, YouTube, beep, beep, and then beep. Yeah, I asked him if he wants to have the, the green or the yellow check. and Yeah. Uh, we're actually, this entire video, we're censoring all of it. <laughs> Perfect. So thanks for joining. Thanks for having me again. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, go check out Derbauer on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you all next time.